Good morning, everyone. Happy Memorial Day. I know on this day, it is customary for us to pay attention and to honor the contributions of our fallen war heroes who fight the war of freedom to protect our freedoms with the use of guns and ammunition and rockets and things of that nature. Today, for 2020, I would like to instead shift our focus to the unsung heroes. The reality is that no matter what war we speak of, the unsung heroes are the mothers and the fathers, the grandmothers, the grandfathers, the aunts, the uncles, the people who take care of our children who will eventually grow to become the warriors on the battlefield. Today, in 2020, the reality is that the threats to our freedom, the threats to democracy, are not for foreign entities and foreign powers and municipalities, but rather the threats to our freedom lie here on our domestic soil, here in our United States. You see, ladies and gents, the threat to our freedoms, our constitutional rights, our human rights, our sovereignty, our rights to gather, our right to speech, those are not being threatened by outsiders. They're being threatened by the very government that has been elected to serve our community. They're being threatened by the media that is so caught up in the need to create drama and fear and anxiety and sensationalism and to pander to their advertisers rather than to shed light on the truth. And their tyranny is so absolute that those who speak out are being censored, not only in the form of not even having any kind of presence in general media forums, but also in having videos and posts removed from social media, from YouTube. So I am asking the unsung heroes, our mothers, our fathers, our grandmothers, our grandfathers, our aunts and uncles, and those of you who are taking care of our children, our teachers, our therapists, psychologists, psychiatrists, to stand up and to say no, no to this tyranny of fear and anxiety. The reason why I am sharing this important message with you is because after months of preparing to be a part of a phenomenal camp for persons with disabilities, for children with disabilities, I recently got this weekend a notification of the guidelines for summer camp. And the guidelines for summer camp say that we are to exercise social distancing and to ensure that our campers are wearing face masks. I reach out to you mothers, fathers, aunts, uncles, grandmothers, grandparents, to stand up for the health and well-being of your children and to say no to this madness. The reality is that the virus which is a common part of nature. Viruses come and go in and out of our environment. The reality is that at any given moment, there are thousands of viruses and bacteria. And yet the essence is the resilience of our children, the health of our children. It is not about testing for an RNA sequence, which may or may not be indicative of the presence of a virus. The focus should be on assessing 
the health status of our children, determining whether or not their systems are functioning optimally, regardless of what viruses and bacteria are in the environment. More importantly, it is our duty as parents to protect our children, body, mind, heart, and soul. The reality is that although every life matters, the truth is that very few children have died from, with, however you want to describe it, COVID-19. Very few children. And those children are more so victims of compromised health and wellness than they are victims of a virus. The reality is that every day, hundreds, if not thousands of our youth are dying from despair. And as we continue to allow our governments to perpetuate this hoax and this malady, this assault on the minds and the souls and the hearts of our children by telling them to be boxed into a social bubble, unable to laugh and run and play and hug and smile and to be seen behind masks. To slowly but surely kill the spirit of beautiful children. That is more devastating than anything that can be perpetrated by a virus. Look at the numbers, mothers, fathers, grandmothers, grandfathers, aunts, uncles, pastors, doctors, teachers. Look at the numbers and open your eyes and realize that what's killing our children is not a virus. What's killing our children is the fear, the panic, the anxiety, the lies that will have them grow up in a world that teaches them to be afraid of each other, teaches them to not see each other, teaches them to be isolated, to be withdrawn in despair, in loneliness. The truth is the leading cause of our children today with the virus, the second leading cause, should I say, for our children aged 13 to 25 is not the coronavirus. It is suicide. And it is time for us, the unsung heroes of truth, of liberty, of freedom, to stand up, to be courageous, to speak out, to birth the hero within for our children's sake. Let us say no and let us put a stop to this madness.